Second type of heat calculation has to do with the phase transitions. So whenever you heat something up you, or you cool something down, it's not just gonna heat up or cool down. At one point, it will also change phase from solid phase to liquid phase to gas phase, right? Depending on the temperature uh, change that you uh, do. So if you start at a temperature that is lower than zero degrees, it's gonna be in ice form, right? And as you heat it up, it's gonna heat up the ice. This is a heating process till it reaches this line right here. This line here is the equilibrium between the solid ice and the liquid water. And at any point along this line is gonna be corresponding to the melting or freezing, uh, depending on the direction of your change. So if you heat a sample up, it's gonna melt right here. And after all the sample melts up, is the liquid water will consume any other heat you give it to increase temperature till it eventually reaches 100 degrees. And at 100 degrees, it's gonna boil into the gas phase. And then if you raise the temperature more, the vapor is gonna heat up, right? This diagram here is called the phase diagram and it correlates the conditions uh, in terms of pressure and temperature with the different phases of the substance. Six types of phase transitions, melting and freezing between solid and liquid, uh, boiling and condensation between uh, liquid and gas, and deposition and sublimation which is the direct transformation between the solid and the gas directly. The transformation or the equilibrium between a solid and liquid uh, is gonna be uh, accompanied by two processes depending on the direction. Melting, which is going from the solid phase to the liquid phase, and freezing is gonna be the opposite change, right? And the melting point or the freezing point, which is the same uh, point, is going to be the temperature at which this exchange between liquid and solid takes place. If you look at this, you will see that it is the same change in energy. So the same amount of energy needed to melt uh, a certain uh, a solid is going to be the same amount of energy released when you freeze the same uh, substance in, from the liquid phase to the solid phase. The second uh, equilibrium is the liquid gas equilibrium, which is a transformation between the liquid phase and the gas phase for the substance. And this occurs at the boiling point of the liquid or the condensation point of the gas, which is the same. It's the temperature at which both the liquid phase and the gaseous phase coexist. So at this line of equilibrium, two processes will take place, either transformation from the liquid to the gas phase, which is vaporization or boiling, or the opposite transformation from the gas phase to the liquid phase, which is called condensation, right? And we have a third equilibrium line, which is the equilibrium between the solid phase and the gas phase. At this equilibrium, we have two transformations. It's gonna be the sublimation, transformation from the solid to the gas directly, uh, versus deposition, which is the transformation from the gas to the solid directly. So the molar heat of a process, whether it's sublimation, uh, fusion or vaporization is the amount of heat needed to transform one mole of the substance during this process. So uh, melting or fusion will be accompanied by a change in energy uh, per mole that is going to be the molar heat of fusion of the substance, delta H fusion. Vaporization is going to be accompanied by a change of energy uh, that is going to be 
the uh, molar heat of vaporization. As you can see, the sublimation, which is a change from the solid phase to the uh, gas phase directly, is basically the sum of the two processes. So it's moving, you, you move from this point to this point, it's, if it's in one step, this is sublimation, it's gonna be the sum of these two steps, which is melting, then evaporation. So the amount of heat needed to do the sublimation process is simply the sum of the two amounts of heat needed to do melting uh, succeeded by vaporization. So molar heat of fusion is gonna be the amount of heat needed to melt one mole of the solid substance to the liquid phase. And the molar heat of vaporization is gonna be the amount of heat needed to vaporize one mole of the liquid substance to the gaseous phase at the boiling uh, point. Normal boiling point or normal melting point is gonna be the temperature at which the liquid boils at an external pressure of one atmosphere. If you remember, we discussed this, uh, external, if the external pressure changes from one atmosphere, you will have a different boiling point that is not the normal boiling point, right? And these boiling points uh, is gonna be uh, proportional to the intermolecular interaction expected uh, in the substance, as we learned in chapter eight. Right, so the higher the intermolecular force, the higher the boiling point, and it's also going to be the higher the amount of heat needed for this process to take place. So, higher intermolecular force is going to uh, make the boiling point higher, and it's going to make the heat of vaporization needed for the vaporization to take place is going to become higher as well. Right, so. Whenever the temperature change that you, we are doing uh, involves a phase transition, we will have to include the phase transition calculation into account along with the heating cooling calculation that we learned previously. So let's uh, actually consider uh, this as the amount of heat right? So uh, you start at low temperature and we, you, you increase the temperature up to the melting point of the substance. All that heat is going to be used to increase the temperature. So this here is the heat change one that can be calculated using the mass of the sample times the specific heat of the solid times the change in temperature that will take place, right? And as soon as you reach the melting point of the substance, the, all the amount of heat that is gonna be consumed is not gonna cause the temperature to rise at all is gonna be completely consumed uh, to just melt the substance. So after the complete melting of substance, the temperature is gonna be the same. No change in temperature will take place. All that heat will be consumed to melt the substance. And we can calculate this from the number of moles of our sample times the molar heat of fusion, right? After you melt your whole sample, any heat you give to your sample is gonna be used right here to increase the temperature or heat up the temperature of the liquid. So that's Q3 is gonna be calculated uh, using the simple heating calculation formula, which is going to be the mass times the specific heat of the liquid times the change in temperature that will take place. 
then when you reach the boiling point again all the heat here is going to be completely consumed to boil your sample it's not going to cause the temperature to increase at all after the whole sample gets boiled and the amount of heat consumed during the boiling process can again be calculated using the molar heat of vaporization using the number of moles in your sample times the uh, molar heat of vaporization after you completely vaporize or boil your sample any heat you put into the sample is going to be used to raise the temperature of the vapor so and this is again a heating uh, process so you can actually calculate it using the mass times the specific heat of the gas times the change in temperature uh, i just want to uh, bring your attention to one thing here is that the specific heat of the solid phase is different than the specific heat for the liquid phase than the specific heat for the gaseous phase even though it's the same substance specific heat is going to be different depending on the different uh, phase so let's do an example here if you have a uh, 346 grams of liquid water at zero degrees and uh, you want to heat it up to one 82 degrees Celsius. Uh, how much energy in kilojoules would you need to do this? The first step is going to be uh, trying to understand what type of processes are taking place in this temperature range. So you start at zero right here, right? And it said liquid water. So you have, you don't have, you don't, you can't consider melting because it's already liquid all the heat that will get in will be used to raise the temperature of the sample uh, of the liquid sample uh, from zero to 100 degrees right 100 degrees is the boiling point which means at 100 degrees temperature will stay constant but you will need little bit more heat to boil the sample right so we need some heat in the first step here to heat up the liquid that's q1 and then at boiling point we will need some more heat q2 to boil the sample after the complete boiling the heat will be used to heat up the gas from 100 to 182, right? Final temperature. That change here would require a third amount of heat, right? Uh, I just wanna bring your attention to this uh, fact here is that during boiling, temperature did not change. It will not change until the boiling process is over and uh, all the sample transforms into the vapor phase, right? So the total amount of heat needed for this process is going to be the sum of the three uh, heat uh, quantities. The first quantity is heating liquid water. Uh, uh, so we'll use the heating uh, formula MC delta T and C here is going to be the specific heat of the liquid water, right? So uh, calculating that first amount of heat is going to require the mass, which is 346, sorry, is 346 grams times the specific heat of water, which is 4.184 joules gram degree times the change in temperature for water water liquid water changed from zero to a hundred so it's a hundred minus zero 
is gonna be equal to 1.45 times 10 to the power of 5 joules or 145 kilo joules then we need another amount of heat to boil the water and we can calculate this from the number of moles times the specific uh, the molar heat of uh, vaporization right so it's gonna equal 346 grams of water divided by the molar mass of water just to calculate or let's do it using the typical procedure we'll multiply the grams times the uh, conversion factor between moles and grams which is 18 grams of water for one mole water this conversion factor uh, allows us to convert grams to moles and then we multiply this times the molar uh, heat of vaporization for water which is 40 point eight kilojoule per one mole would be seven eighty three kilojoules to just boil that much water after boiling we'll need a third amount of heat to heat up the gas from a hundred to a hundred eighty two and we can calculate this using the mass of the gas sample, which is going to be the same mass times specific heat of the gas times a change in temperature. Remember, this is not the same as uh, the liquid phase. Liquid water have, has a specific heat of this value. Gas, yes, water have a specific heat of this value. So for this is going to be three, 46 grams times 1.99 joule gram degree which is the specific heat of the vapor times 182 temperature final temperature for the vapor minus a hundred which is the initial temperature so that gives us 56.5 kilo joules so the total amount of heat needed for this whole process is going to be q1 plus q2 plus q3 so it's going to be 985 kilo joules Uh, and let's stop here and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue uh, the other sections of, uh, of the chapter in a different uh, video.